Sheila, thank you so much for being here. Thank it's you. a it's a, such a thank pleasure. Thank you for having me. Um, congratulations on this new album. Thank you. Will you do us the honor of just translating what the title of the album actually means? Well, it's really a tribute to a certain time in Mexican music where women and men would get together, um, wear zoot suit type clothes. Um, I'm sorry to define it that way for the people who know the origin of this music um, and would dance in the salones. El Salón México was a very famous salon or so kind of saloon, kind of a bar and kind of a very serious dance hall. And uh, so it really is about nostalgia. Some of the music is inspired um, by this, this time and the danzón. Danzón makes a very important um, entrance in music there. And Tears and Desire is the title. And as I understand it, um, this album was inspired by some very strong feelings that you had, uh, you experienced after the presidential election here in the US. Uh, shocking. <laughs> yeah. tell, tell us about that. It is. I'm afraid that um, I was very, I was very disheartened. I, I still have a broken heart about it. Um, I guess that I was very angry before that. Um, I really did feel like going and getting a rifle, like probably a lot of Mexicans do. <laughs> um, but I decided, well, that's really like the easy way out, right? Um, hate breeds more hate, of course. And I thought, um, I wish to rise above that. And I know that I can show that love is stronger than hate. And that's really what this album is about. So it's... Is it fair to say it's equal parts pain and hope? It is. It's definitely singing to an audience that has a broken heart um, because I, that is my expression and I think our music is always an expression of what we are living in our reality, our culture, our society, our universe. And hopeful and yet hopeful, loving, but proud. It's definitely about dignity, this album is about dignifying mariachi music, bolero, and danzón. Um, were you at any point surprised by your own reaction to the political realities here, um, and, and also perhaps surprised by how you expressed them in this album? I am, and you know, I think the amazing thing about music and art in general is that you learn as you go along. I mean, um, I imagine it's the same thing for painters and for cinematographers. You, you make your, your artwork, like this previous song that we just listened to called Peligrosa or Dangerous, and you can't really put your finger on why that is or what it means exactly to you until you perform it over and over and over again and you have a dialogue with your audience, and then it's like you start to, oh, okay, I get it now. It's not even, it's not even a language thing sometimes. It's more like an in intuitive reaction to art, and I think that's, that's the great thing about art is that it's like magic. Um, you were also inspired by um, escalating crime in, in Mexico. Yes. Uh, do you feel like, I think a lot of people are feeling these days, that the world is just becoming m increasingly dangerous? Well, I think our perception is has changed because now we are connected, obviously, to the media constantly. And so probably a lot of dark and horrible things were happening in the past that no one ever knew about, or at least that was your perception. Of course, if something awful happened to you, that would not be. But um, I think that it's, it is a reality uh, to live in a society that is in denial in a way of the violence. So it's just like a human being, an individual that is in denial of something that is happening to them. Um, a whole society is kind of with the, you know, kind of covering and, and covering for 
is our nature to survive, you know? So that's, that's the contradiction, right? It's like you're always censoring yourself because you're afraid of not being able to enjoy life. Um, you've made nine albums, you've won a Grammy, you've won four Latin Grammys. As an artist, are you at your best, you know, most creative, most passionate, most productive when you're feeling down? Um, <laughs> I think it contributes to great works of art, um, having trouble, yeah. And I think also um, not having it easy in life contributes to great things. Um, I know that when I go to France or I go to Germany, um, I don't speak the native language, and so I have to go out of my way to translate, and I know that it pushes me to understand people better and to figure things out in, in how to translate. Um, so I, th I think it's important to have balance. It's like anything in life, and that's why people who have too much power and too much money tend to be terrible leaders because they kind of, I think, don't uh, have balance in their lives. Sounds like a wise statement. <laughs> um, let's talk about Peligrosa, um, the beautiful song that we just heard. Uh, it, as you pointed out, it, it translates uh, roughly to dangerous, and it's in the female form. It's Peligrosa, not Peligroso. Yes. Yes. Um, is this song intended as a, as a feminist anthem of sorts? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, when it comes from a woman's perspective, I have a different reaction to it. And when a man says exactly what you just asked me, I say... For the <laughs> record, I'm not answer. a man. <laughs> my answer is I am the daughter of feminism. Uh, we all are. Otherwise, we wouldn't even be sitting here wearing jeans and being able to vote and asking permission from our husbands to come out on the streets uh, or have credit cards or anything like that. So I think, um, yeah, it's about losing fear of that term, but surprisingly, there are a lot of people who still feel, um, you know, that that's aggression in some, in some way. And uh, I think this piece is very feminine and very assertive, and it's about, um, it's about taking the power and bringing it so that it, it doesn't feel heavy anymore. And you can get up and feel proud of who you are. I hope that our music does that for people because I know that some music has saved my life personally at very dark moments. Um, you, I, I, I get the feeling you are constantly touring. Um, yes, we are. <laughs> you are Mexican-American though. Do you, do you, when you're not touring or performing, do you divide your time fairly equally between Mexico and the US? I do, yeah. We, um, we try to spend a lot of time in, in Mexico now, mainly in Oaxaca because our seven-year-old is going to school there. So we're we're in the in the rural kind of area uh, mainly, and but we try to come here as often as as we can. We visit, of course, my husband's family is out here out east, and um, and my New York family, right? <laughs> I see some people sitting here, um, and and of course, uh, L.A. is a very important area in Chicago as well for the Mexican-American communities. And um, it's always interesting to see yourself in your cultural surrounding. And you're constantly learning how this country changes is, is amazing. It's like New York City, you know, the <laughs> each block is, has different businesses. You know, every time we come back, it's kind of an example or a metaphor for the rest of the country is constantly changing and and I love that. I This is also my country and Mexico is also my country. So um, I am broken hearted in a way, but I also am very in love with this country and very in love with Mexico as well. I'd love to know what 
what you find most challenging about being a dual national? As one myself. <laughs> yeah. I'd love yeah. to hear your perspective on mm -hmm. that. Well, I think um, the question is, how do I find those things that are positive from from culture and and the challenges um, turn it around and figure out um, I guess a spiritual way to deal with it and I think in that sense I'm lucky because I have a third culture to refer to which is my Native American culture and I think that I'm Mishtec and probably most Mexicans have some kind of Native American background, even though people in the cities have lost that connection with, or sometimes they are reviving it. In Mexican American communities in the US, it's very typical to be looking for that root. And I, th I think in my case, I go back to that. It's my grandmother who had no education, and she, she grew up in the country, and and I remember her vision was, um, you know, uh, to my mother and to myself, why are you going to buy a car? Why are you going to get another apartment if you have a roof to be under and you have a car already, it might be a few years older, just live with that. And I, th I think it's, I mean, it's a long question it's a long answer to your question, but it has to do with with um, with expressing, I guess, um, things that that make you feel comfortable and give you uh, happiness. You know, it's that's that's the issue for me. I think you're an, you're a wonderful role model for for other Mexican Americans. What would you or what do you? Um, say to, say, young Latin Americans living here who feel maligned or, or disenchanted? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that looking for your roots and accepting who you are is, is e so easy to say, but it's very difficult to figure out when you're younger. And I had those issues. I, I hated my Indian past because everyone else hated it. And um, of course, Mexican TV, everyone is blonde and blue eyed and everyone in reality and culture is like dark and has black hair. And so that never, it's like, I couldn't even say that. Now I'm finally talking about these things, but I'm one of few people who, who are addressing them, I think. And um, I think those are, and it's not only in Mexico, I think it's happening every place, right? <laughs> Uh, so I would say, yeah, be truthful to what you're feeling. And as, as women, um, I think, you know, be truthful to your instinct and, and, and your inner voice, because that inner voice is wise. Um, well, I'm curious to know how you're feeling ab about things now, then, if you were, you were in quite a funk post-election. Uh, you definitely sound more at ease and, and more hopeful. Now. I'm hopeful. I try to be hopeful every day, even though um, it's difficult at times. And I think that's what this tattoo is about. It's about respect. Um, it's about respecting the other. It's about respecting myself. And it's about educating people to respect what is different from, from yourself. I think that's the first lesson. It's about being humble. And it isn't, um, I mean, I think a lot of religions, there's a reason that they teach you that's one of the principal teachings because it, it facilitates um, relationships between people. And as an old hippie or as a hippie, <laughs> I do believe in love. I really do think that if you just let yourself feel love, everything works out. Don't be afraid of that. That makes <laughs> me feel nice. Um, will you just share one thing about 
uh, where you're from, Oaxaca, or mm -hmm. where you spend uh, your, your time in Mexico. I've actually been there and um, absolutely loved it. it. The people were so warm. The chocolate was amazing. It is. Uh, and I also <laughs> ate some I ate some crickets at oh. the fantastic market there, so yeah. that was interesting. Um, <laughs> what is one thing that you would like people to, to know about Oaxaca? Oh. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes, I am. you are. Yes. yes, thank you for pronouncing that correctly. Um, Oaxaca is a, a beautiful place that connects with our pre-Hispanic past, um, with the ancestors, with the grandmas, and it connects to the future. And the food is amazing. And of course, the mezcal. You have to taste Oaxacan mezcal. There's such a variety. It's a growing industry right now. We wrote a song for dedicated to mezcal. And, and, uh, and you know, there's also um, a hippie uh, expat community in Oaxaca that respects tradition and is there mm -hmm. Probably originally to to live there uh, cheaply, but <laughs> ends up, you know, getting to know the culture and appreciating it. And so, um, my husband is one of those, and he's over there sitting in the in the audience. <laughs> and um, I think it's a beautiful place because I feel like people respect each other because we in Oaxaca have sixteen. Native American groups and languages. There's a beautiful fair there that it happens um, the second week in July, and it's a folk fair. And there's a there's a fe feria del mole. There's a fair for mole, and you can taste all kinds of mezcales there at the fair. And it's coming up, and we happen to have a concert on the 18th of July um, at this Gelaguetza fair, and um, and. I, you know, invite you to come and visit the sky and the clouds and the light is so special there. You really are in communion with nature. I think Leela has just invited everybody to her home. <laughs> Maybe I misread that. Um, uh, do our audience members have any questions for, for Leela? Hi. Hi. Uh, Good. I, was, I know that you, uh, you've done some songs for uh, soundtracks, like including uh, Fida a while back. And, yeah. Uh, I was wondering how you uh, got involved with that. Was that something, how you liked uh, working on a film or like a soundtrack where it wasn't just your music? And um, is that something that you still want to do? Yeah, of course. I think all musicians are honored to be invited to do a soundtrack, uh, you know, because it's it's a beautiful platform to for people to get to know your music. And of course, um, I had known about Frida Kahlo when I was studying textiles in college. And so it was very exciting to do something uh, that had to do with her. And our music, I think, as well, has to do with her. It's about roots, the roots of all kinds of music, and especially Mexican music. Um, and yeah, it was a lovely experience. Julie Taymor invited us, and Elliot Goldenthal uh, wrote the original music. And we improvised and we did uh, the recording of the main song on the Oscars at that time um, in, in Rio, in Brazil. We recorded it with Caetano Veloso. Yeah. Do we have another question? Hi. Hi. Um, would you ever write a song about the current Mex president of Mexico, Enrique Peña Nieto? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, you know, I might have to. I've been getting a lot of requests for that, so <laughs> I'm going to have to think about a good way of, uh, of turning that one around. <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi. Um, what is the impact that you wish to have with your music and the songs that you write? I hope that our music makes people feel. I think that you know, I, re I really need to listen to all kinds of music as well. Um, you know, sometimes I need to just be, you know, <laughs> feel happy, feel excited. You know, um, I love all these uh, different categories on Spotify, you know, running and <laughs> doing exercise and, and whatever. But there comes a moment when you really need to listen to music for the spiritual parts that I think make you 
think of of the right things and and I saw Joni Mitchell in there and I thought about that because you know there are certain singer songwriters that remind you of the important things the big things and for me it's very important to listen to someone during my day that will ground me that way. Yeah. Thank you so much, Leela Downs, everybody. Thank Her you. Round of applause. Thanks so much Thank for you. coming.